I need you to think after this talk. I need you to choose and decide what kind of a person you are. A floating person or a sinking person. Just think about it, okay? I think most of you know how to swim, right? I don't. I'm not proud of it. I tried to learn once. Back in November 2017, my friends and I visited Monroe Islands in Kollam district of Kerala. Uh, it was a part of a social responsibility camp. A couple of our friends from the Netherlands also joined us. So it's a beautiful place with Kalada River and Ashtamudi Lake surrounding all these small islands, just blue and green of nature merging together, really calm and serene. The Kalada River was just behind the house we were staying. So one fine evening, we all were on the bank of the river and it was a really tiring day with surveys and stuff. So suddenly our Dutch friends decided to go for a swim in the river. Let's swim! <laughs> Some of us did how, know how to, how to swim and they were already excited to go and jump in. Yeah. And some of us didn't, like me. I said, um, I don't know. They said, no, don't worry, it's okay, we'll teach you. I said, yes, okay, I was excited, I was really happy. It's not always you get to have international swimming lessons. So, yes. And after half an hour of practicing, I calmed myself down. The first lesson was to how to float, by the way. So, yes, after half an hour of practicing, I calmed myself down and I was floating. It was an incredible experience, maybe because it was the first time, but still, I could see the tinted sky, I couldn't hear anything else, just me floating there with water whispering into my ears. Ah, I thought, enough with the swimming lessons, I am born for this, nice. After a few moments, I realized that the trees are moving. Okay. Oh no, I was floating away. I was floating on a river. I would have drowned if I moved, but I stayed just like that and then cried out to my friends, help, please. Okay. They saw me just in time. They swam to me and dragged me to the shore. And yes, I understood the importance of swimming then. Yes. Later, they created a boundary by standing in the water and asked me to float within that boundary. I said, yes, okay, sorry, no more troubles. And I continued floating and my friends kept a keen eye on me. Yes, great friends, right? Later, we called it a day and headed back home. And that's when my friend asked me to study about floating houses for Munro Islands. Actually, the social responsibility camp involves studying submerging of Munro Islands. So a uh, part of Munro Islands is sinking and the houses are flooding so much so that it had become an everyday activity for the residents to wake up at midnight with water lapping inside their bedrooms. See? Then I started research on floating houses and landed on the concept of amphibious houses. I asked my guide about it since it was a novel concept here. She was very supportive. Actually, one of her favorite quotes is, like water, be gentle and strong. Be gentle enough to follow the natural paths of the earth and strong enough to rise up and reshape the world. She believes in the power of water and she believes in these concepts too. So, what is the concept of an amphibious house? An amphibious house is a house or a building which, is, which has a buoyant foundation rests on the ground most of the time, but is designed to float only when the floodwaters rise. So the house rises with the incoming floodwaters, stay on top of it, then return to its original position back to the ground through the guidance posts provided. Like my friends. My friends created a boundary by standing in the water, right? Just like that, it, is, it acts as boundaries for the house to float. And also it guides up the house vertically up and down and allowing it to stay on top of the water all the time. 
Do you remember this person who ran out of his bathtub yelling, Eureka, Eureka? Yes, Archimedes. It's a, it's the same principle as her that he found out when he was in this tub. Weight of Archimedes is equal to the volume of water he displaced. And that's why, my friends, you, me, and the house can float on water. So I had my internship in the Netherlands last year. And it was it is a beautiful country with bicycles everywhere and tulips too. But it is also the place where a bridge is built for a river to cross the streets. See, they've been working for years with such dedication just to be in peace with water, just to give it space instead of fighting against it, with the fact that nearly one third of the country is below sea level. I had the chance to visit this town called Marswomel and study about the amphibious houses constructed there with the help of a few professors, natives, and the initiator of the plan himself. And there are 32 amphibious houses and 14 floating houses. Are they different things? Yes. The floating houses always float on water, while amphibious houses rest on ground but only float when the floodwaters come in. See, you can see me as an amphibious house. I'm living on land peacefully most of the times, but when I see water, I float, right? So this house can top on or float can, or float on top of any level of water, but is restricted to the height of the guidance post. And it is better than statically elevated houses or houses on posts because if the floodwaters rise up beyond the predicted height, it can again enter into your house and ruin your positions. And we wouldn't want to live in a house when we get old or sick all the time because of the height, do we? So there are mainly four components of an amphibious house. This is UK's first amphibious house. And uh, this is a section view. The first component is bed dock and debris control to control the inflow of debris uh, and mud, rock, etc. Second one is the buoyant foundation, which helps the house to float on top of water. Third one is the guidance post, uh, which guides the house up and down. Fourth one is flexible utility connections, long and flexible pipes to bring in water, electricity, and bring out wastewater, everything. It will retain its ground connection even during the flood times. So the foundation can be made using concrete, steel, bamboo, or even recycled barrels, something like this. I made this model for my project using recycled cans. So imagine this on a bigger scale, let's say eight times larger, something like this. You can use 200 liters HDPE barrels for the foundation inside a steel framework. So you can actually, either you can create a house fully eco-friendly using bamboo and other natural materials, or a house, a creative house using recycled materials alone. There are many cho choices. Yes. So a few months after the visit to Monroe Islands, I was with my parents having a wonderful day it was a rainy evening. Uh, we were in the open veranda having a warm coffee. Suddenly, I heard a siren. I saw everyone rushing inside their houses. I was shocked. We came inside our house, closed the doors, braced ourselves. I saw water rushing towards the house. I was afraid. Even though we were prepared, my heart raced. My whole body was chilling. I couldn't move. Then I saw all the houses and water through the windows. And I, I was so shocked. Everything was floating. Not the materials, but the houses. This was just a dream. But I don't think you will believe this. I've seen this exact dream more than a couple of times, maybe because I'm working on this project. But still. What disturbed me most was when I saw all those houses sinking in water during the uh, flood of 2018 in Kerala. After that, I thought about this dream again. Since it was a horrendous dream, I remember it vividly. And I figured out two things. 
a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that we were prepared for the disaster and we could reduce the after effects in my dreams. In the bad thing is that we were preparing for an impending disaster. We knew what was coming. We've been doing it so many times in my dreams again. And we knew something horrible that is going to take place. In reality, I question myself, then why we never tried changing? Climate is changing. Why didn't we? I, I understood that, as Douglas Adams said, no single drop of water th thinks that it is responsible for the flood. But why didn't we give it space instead of fighting against it? Amphibious construction ensures double land use, space for living, space for water. It demands no big changes from our usual living style because it's most of the time it's on the ground. Also, if we need to evacuate during the extreme time of flood and abandon our properties, positions, everything, we can come back to a house after the flood, everything will be safe. The house will save itself. So once a noble personality said, what I had always been my true friend, it held me up and whispered to me when I floated. It embraced me and remained silent when I dove in. If it ever rushes towards me screaming like a monster, I'll give it room and respect and ask, did I do anything wrong? See, we have to think about it. It was said none other than by myself. But you have to think about it, trust me. See, my friends, my family, my loved ones, my guide, everyone buoyed me up so that I could learn to adapt. If they ever anchored me down somewhere, I would have never floated. I would have never been on the stage. I could have never shown you the sassy photograph of mine. But yes, it is time for us to adapt and help others to adapt. After all, as this French biologist said, theories pass, but the frog remains. Try to figure that out too. So, when we are surrounded by a flood of problems, you can be either a sinking person, or maybe a floating person, or maybe another third option, an amphibious person. Now it's time for you to choose. Thank you.